Hi everyone, today we're down at Tainmouth Pier on the south coast in Devonshire and we're searching for the answer to that all important question Who makes cream tea correctly? The Cornish or the people of Devon? We're going to find out Well, here we are right on the seafront and I've got to be honest, I feel I'm dressed for the occasion. I've got a scarf, a shirt, I've got a t-shirt, I've got a jumper, I've got a coat, I've got a hat. And I've got gloves. Yes, but the noise behind us are folks that are really enjoying a January dip in the sea. Well, we're going to leave the happy swimmers singing away down there in the water and take a stroll along and show you a little bit of this gorgeous, quaint seaside town. It is absolutely beautiful. The architecture is brilliant and we're talking hundreds and hundreds of years that this place has been on the coast here with a population of people who've earned their living from the sea and in more recent times from tourists like us. Look at this, isn't that sweet? Beach Cottage. It looks lovely. Mm, with a name like Beach Cottage, then you must be able to see the beach. So I'm going to pop along to the front of Beach Cottage. It's got some very low down windows, but it goes up another two stories. But if we turn around to where they used to have a lovely view of the beach, the sea defences are now completely blocking the view. Unless you're upstairs. I want to be up there. So I can see the sea and the beach and all the beautiful sights and sounds and the birds flying and the crowds all taking very cold dips in the middle of January. <laughs> now if there's one thing you can rely on pretty much anywhere in the UK when it comes to gorgeous architecture it's the churches. We have lots of churches and lots of public houses. Now this church is the Church of St Michael and it has a gorgeous ornate tower to the side this doorway is absolutely beautiful but it's not the only church in the town there are quite a few and we have to go across town to show you one that is far more intriguing because of its architectural value but as I mentioned there are also pubs and there's a pub on the harbour here that's been there since 1661 now that's 29 years before the last French invasion of this land how do I know because they invaded this town so the chances are there were people sat in the pub over there on the harbour having a little drink when the French fleet came into town and virtually destroyed the place. That is a pretty impressive tower. The whole thing is quite impressive. Look at those windows. And I thought we could go around and have a good look at the tower. And then I noticed this big notice Footpath closed, no access to Dorley Street, rectification works on Church Tower. And that's not easy to say. Church remains open, we apologise for any inconvenience, thank you. So as you can see, they barricaded it off, we can't get around to the bottom of the tower, but that is wonderful. There's the clock, it's 20 past three. No flag on the top, but nonetheless, very impressive. As you can see here, this is the problem they get with this sort of building. They use sandstone, which is really easy to carve. It's a gorgeous deep yellow colour for a rock or a stone, but it gets terrible erosion. All this wind and rain lashes against it, and as you can see, wears it away. It looks like one of those bath bombs when it's half dissolved in your bath. 
It's a bit drafty too. Look at that. Ooh. That's going to let a fair bit of wind through. Nice door, so. We'd better make a move. Ooh. We've got a long way to walk across town if we're going to see the other church. Quick. And here we are, about a five, six minute walk and we've arrived up on the hill and we're outside the church of St. James the Less. Now this church, the original, was built back in the 13th century. But what we're stood in front of now is extremely eye-catching because the design was built to create an octagonal building, which is very unusual, particularly in England when it comes to church buildings. We, we tend to stick with tradition, but they didn't when they built this place. Yes, while well, the original building was made of the red stone that comes from the local area and was built very much on a square box arrangement as you would expect, this went for something completely different when it was constructed in 1821. The old building was demolished to make way two years earlier than that. But there is one part of this building that still remains as a testament to what stood here for 750 odd years. And that's the red tower on the one side. And that red tower not only served as the church tower, but as a watchtower. And it is from there they would have seen the French invading in the 14th century and again in the 17th century. Here I am stood at the watchtower, the church tower, the tower that offered protection for this town as they looked out to sea. In 1340 the French invaded for the first time and the response of the people here was to raise seven ships and 120 men to go on the fleet expedition to Calais seven years later. Then the French were back, 1690, the very last time that the French invaded this country, the very last time England was invaded by foreign troops. On that occasion they did some damage. There were ten ships and all of their belongings lost in the harbour as they were burnt. There were about 160 homes level to the ground by fire. Over 170 further homes were ransacked as they went wild. A thousand of the French fleet just taking this place apart. But it was a mistake that the French ever did it because they had just come off the back of a tremendous victory against the Allied fleet. They had driven the British ships and their allies away up towards the Thames. But instead of following in pursuit 
and really bringing home their victory and possibly changing the course of history for this land. I could be speaking French to you right now if they'd only done that, but they didn't. They headed down to Torbay and attacked Tainmouth. Now the devastation caused here at Tainmouth, even back then, we're talking 1690, came to the total of over 11,000 pounds. So the king sent an announcement out in every church throughout the land and a collection was made and the people of this place were supported by people across the country as they rebuilt their town including a street that bears a name that will forever mark that final invasion by the french it's called french street it was leveled in the invasion rebuilt and renamed and now houses a museum for those events. As I always say, there's history all around us. It's early in the morning, time to collect some bits of driftwood for my craft. Mm, there's lots of little bits of driftwood on this beach, but not as many as I would have liked to be in the perfect size. But I'm sure I'm going to be fine. And I've got plenty of seagulls to keep me company. And look at that view. Oh, what a wonderful place to be coming to collect craft supplies. Some people are much braver than me. There's a lady going in for a dip and look at that, she's not even pausing to get used to the cold. Whoa. No good for me. I'm here with my boots and my gloves and my scarf. I haven't got my hat on. It's great fun looking for driftwood amongst all these little boats. Look at them. Oh, this is so cute. Now that, I suspect, is not a piece of driftwood. <laughs> Somebody's dumped their Christmas tree there. Not quite sure why, maybe it's collected because if we have a look, lots of bigger bits of wood are here, so perhaps this is a collection point where people come to get the wood to burn on their fires or perhaps the council picks it up, I have no idea. Aha! It looks like these chains have filled us out a nice little shell or two. That's perfect, just what I wanted. I'm not sure if I'm going to leave it joined together or take it apart. It's definitely coming with me because that's going to suit my purposes down to the ground. Aha, uh -huh, there's still somebody in that one. Okay, you go back to sleep. Wait till the tide comes in. Look at that. What a wonderful, peaceful scene. And there's even a seagull posing for me. Hello, Mr. Seagull. Some people have commented on how clean the streets are when they see us driving around. Now this street has got a little bit of... I don't think you could even term it litter. Look at that. It's in the street, but it's just all driftwood, which has been washed up by the tide. Well, you can forgive that. That's very natural. Look at these lovely little cottages. All in different colours. And just a stone's throw from the beach. Oh, look at this. I love these little quaint streets you get in these seaside villages and towns. People put their plants out on the road, but it doesn't matter because, as you can see, it's a very quiet road. Not many people drive around here. If they do, and they're in anything other than a small car, they probably get wedged on the corners. Oh, there's a dragon on top I of the house. I was going to say, yes, a dragon on a pink house. Oh, I don't know if you can see it. It's up there. Yeah. The fluffy gloves. Oh, and I think there may be two. Aha, uh -huh, there's one wrapped around the chimney pot. Now I'm going to try to stretch this picture so that you can see it, but I'm not too optimistic about what a pretty coloured house. And look at the number and the name of the street. Number 11, French Street. More pretty coloured cottages. Which one's your favourite? If you own one of these cottages, what colour would you go for? The blue, the cream, the white, the off-white, the pink? Hmm. 
I'm not sure what I'd go for. I'd probably go for white and then paint the shutters a colour. What about you? Whoa, look at that cottage. Now, I'm not very tall. I'm five foot one and three quarters. That three quarters is very important. And if I put this camera up with my eye height, that door is very short. Phil is six foot six. Excuse and... me, I'm six foot. <laughs> oh, sorry. Phil is six foot. <laughs> and he wouldn't get through there. He's laughing because I said he was six foot six. <laughs> I just prone to exaggeration sometimes. <laughs> this is Tainmouth Station. Or is it? Tinmouth station. So I went on Google and checked and apparently according to Google, did you know this Phil, it's actually called Tinmouth. Now that's interesting. Very interesting because there is a movie that was made in 1966 by the comedian Norman Wisdom, all set here in Tinmouth. And for the purposes of the movie, they changed all the signs and called it T-I-N Mouth. They actually named it Tinmouth. So there we go. Ooh, a little bit of information. A bit of information. And that's not the only comedic connection. Ooh, another comedic connection. Yes, because as well as putting this station on the map, which was brought to you in the 19th century, and the tourists just flooded into this area, bringing all the wealth and the buildings that we've seen so far today. But as well as the station made famous by Norman Wisdom, there's a little shop in the town that... The owner chose to take the name for his shop from a famous sketch by the two Ronnies. His shop is an ironmonger's and he called it the Four Candles or the Four Candles, depending how you say it. See, as well as history from long ago, from the Victorians, right back to the Normans and the French invasions, we've even got light-hearted history from the 20th century. Oh, look at this. We're on the station and it's absolutely gorgeous. The painting is all very well maintained. Let's go have a look at that really fancy column over there. Oh, it seems a long way away when you're waiting to get to it. Right, so this has got a lot of filigree type thing at the top. And then you've got some florals on that bit there, which I'm sure is a very technical name for. Then we've got a fluted column and some flowers there. And some spirals. Looks very festive to me. But if we look down there, you can see there's a bridge in front of us, then there's another one, then there's another one, and then there's another one. I've come right down to the end of the platform to show you the metal bridge, oh, about there-ish. Incidentally, that is the bridge that Norman Wisdom walked down when he got off the train at Tinmouth Station in the film. Well, as you can see, this is Tinmouth Station. That bridge goes up over the top, so it isn't quite geographically correct, but not a lot of people know that. Of course, no one would ever accuse the Johnsons of camera trickery. No, never. Go away. Ta-da! The train's about due, and look at that gorgeous bridge going over the top of the tracks. Oh, another bing bong. One, this goes. Not of goes, let's go see where this goes. Hmm. I need to increase my vocabulary a little. Oh look there's an arch there. Probably a window on a doorway was there once. This looks fairly new even though it's decorated in quite old style. Oh look, I recognise that person. Look out with a window. You can see those churches again, lots of houses. Mm. 
Hmm, what's out of that window? Oh, you can see the tracks and more houses. And if we go across this way, there's some pointy bits on some roofs. What I'm really impressed by the beauty of these stations and as a young lad I used to love to go to Cardiff, train spotting, travelling on trains all the time. It was such an exciting experience. It's also good to stop and realise the level of engineering that was needed when the likes of Brunel brought railways to coastal towns like this. Skirting along the edges of cliffs and along the seaside and when they arrived here Look at the size of that wall behind me and the buildings up above and the road beyond. It was such a mega engineering process to get the level lines down so that trains could roll in. But roll in they do and sometimes they don't half shift as they go through the station on a non-stop run. The fast train now approaching well I think we've covered this station from one end to the other We've seen the trains. Now it's time to answer the question. Cornish cream tea or Devonshire cream tea? Where did it all start? And what is the difference? Come on, over to the kitchen at our holiday apartment and we're gonna find out. Well, welcome everyone to our apartment. Just spent three days here. We leave tomorrow and what a lovely time it's been. What a gorgeous view from this place. It's absolutely phenomenal. We're in an apartment that was built in 2010 on top of the local cinema that was. So a lot of history down below us, but this place is relatively new. But the view, wow, people have been admiring that for centuries. On our way back, I saw a plaque saying that the charter for the market for Tainmouth was given in 1002. That's 1,020 years ago. That's crazy. And for almost that long, since the 12th century, there's been a debate on who actually came up with cream tea. Scones, jam and cream. Devonshire or Cornwall. Well, we're gonna try a bit of both and show you how it's done and let you know what we think. Caroline's busy getting everything ready, so let's go join her in the kitchen. Oh, this is really exciting. We are about to find out which tastes nicer, the Cornish cream tea or the Devon cream tea. Mmm. So to prepare these, I've got some clotted cream in the tub. I've got some strawberry conserve, which is nicer than strawberry jam. And I've got some Raisin scones or scones, depends what you call them. I tend to call them scones, Bill tends to call them scones. So let's have a look how I'm planning to make these. On the one side's going to be the Cornish, on the other side's going to be the Devon, and we'll see what the difference is. It's quite essential. I've got my knife. This is not the sharpest knife in the world. One of the problems with coming away on holidays, I like a sharp knife, and this is not a sharp knife. So I'm going to cut each scone or scone in half. There's one, and there's the other. I have no idea what the lighting is doing or the framing on this video because I'm not used to filming with this camera indoors. So please bear with me. Now, if you're going to have, and I want to check this out with Phil because he's the knowledgeable one here. Oh, look, there's some raisins. I need to eat those. Mmm. Now, according to tradition, mm -hmm. Cornish. Yep. Jam on bottom. Right. Cream on top. So. I'm going to add the jam to the bottom. So that is Cornish. And then I'm going to add the cream on the top. Now I'm not sure the best way to do this, so what I do is put it on there, and then you put the cream on there, 
Never mix your clotted cream. You might think, oh, do I need to stir this? No, do not stir your clotted cream, you'll ruin it. Plenty of clotted cream. And then you join the two together and you've got jam on the bottom, cream on the top. For the Devon one, we're going to put cream on the bottom. <laughs> we're getting messy. Part of the fun of cooking is getting messy. So we put now cream on the bottom. Ah, it's very sticky. And we're going to put our jam on the top. And then whoop, pop it on like that. Now I think I'm maybe putting too much cream and jam on, but that's the way I like them. So now all we need to do is check these out. So there we've got one very messy Devon cream tea and one much more sensible looking Cornish cream tea. Oh, now that sounds like you're making a judgment on which is mm. the better. No, but that, <laughs> because of the sloppy way I made it, the one does look nicer than the other. But I think that that might be the opposite around when it comes to tasting because this one's got lots of sweetness. Let's find out. So let's go try out these cream teas and see what we think. See which one we prefer. And let me know in the comments which one do you think you prefer or which one do you know you prefer? So, Mr. Johnson, it's time for the taste test. I can see you're excited already. Well, what's not to like? Now, I know there are those out there saying, Phil, this is ridiculous. How can there be any difference? It's just the other way around. But it seems they've been arguing about this for a long time. Devonshire cream teas traces back to the 11th century. It seems that Tavistock Abbey, the monks were making clotted cream and what they did was made clotted cream and jam sandwiches with bread for the labourers. And that's where it all began, so they say. But the argument has raged on because in 2018, a National Trust property put a photograph in a Cornish magazine of the National Trust saying, here is a Cornish cream tea available at this venue. Guess what? The jam was on the top. Wow, what a response. People were using terms like disgusting, unacceptable, terrible, and people even threatened to resign from the National Trust in protest. Well, the National Trust quickly printed a retraction and a full apology to all the Cornish people that were offended. So it is a big issue. So here we go. Let's see how this works out now. I'm going to start with the neat looking one. Right. <laughs> this one looks neater. Now, I think that's just down to Caroline's presentation yeah. rather than the fact it's Cornish. But I'll give it a go. Oh, it's exciting. It's exciting. Is it going to make a mess? Oh, no, that was very neatly eaten. Mm. What do you think? Very nice. Right. Try again. Now for the Devon one. <laughs> it's just very messy. If Phil can eat this without making a mess, it will be a miracle. Here we go. Go, go, go. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Oh, that was very, very delicately eaten again. I'm impressed. I've been practicing all day this. <laughs> so what do you reckon then? Devon or Cornwall? I've got to tell the truth. Go on then, you tell the truth. They're both lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling they would be. A combination of scones, jam and clotted cream, what's there not to like? That's my very thought. What is there not to like? Well, I hope you enjoyed this video of us down here in Tainmouth on holidays as much as we've enjoyed the holiday and I've enjoyed the taste test. Yes, I could see you enjoyed that. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Boing, boing, boing. That would be great. And of course, tomorrow night, if you can join us, that's Saturday night, nine o'clock, we'll be back with a live show. But until the next time we do see you here on Let's Go With The Johnsons, don't forget, have fun. Bye. Bye.